Getting started. This video shows how to get started creating your one-on-one -on -one website. You'll learn many necessary steps, including how to create a logon shortcut, back up your website in case of editing errors, and preview website appearance on computers and mobile devices. This video is in series Easy Website Creation. The series shows you how to create your own inexpensive personal internet website like the one shown here. Videos in the series should be watched in order from the playlist. To open the playlist, pause the video, click the circled eye in the video window, then click the playlist pop-up. To revisit the playlist later, create a shortcut while the playlist is open. Logging on. To make it easier to log on to edit your website, you should create a desktop shortcut with this URL. It's HTTPS colon slash slash www.oneand1.com slash login. Then to log on, just open your shortcut, enter your account number or username or domain name and your password. I entered my domain name, which is www.tomstechnotes.com, and then my password, and then you press login. If you see Edit Website appear, click it. If you don't, click Manage Website under Your Website, and then you can click Edit Website. Before we start editing the website, let's review four management topics. Themes. When you set up your website, one in one showed you how to select a theme for your website. Themes are basically related to businesses. So if you offered a certain kind of service, there might be a theme for your website. This video is going to concentrate on just setting up a personal website. It really doesn't have a theme. Uh, once you select a theme though, you can basically ignore it or you can select a blank theme from the one in one selection. When one and one helped you create your initial website, your theme will add several standard pages if you don't have a blank theme. You can delete those you don't need, and we'll show you how to do that later. And you can just add and customize blank pages to build your personal website. Publish. When you make changes to your website, they become visible to site visitors only after you publish your website. To publish or republish, click this button up here in the upper right corner. It will either say publish or republish, depending on whether or not you have your business card activated, which we will discuss in a moment. On the first screen after you entered your username and password, click Manage Website. And then you'll have a line here that will either say uh, your website is published or it will say your online uh, business card is active. If it says published and you want to hide it with an online business card, click the gear wheel, then click activate online business card. Before you activate it for the first time though, you will want to edit it to provide the information on it. And here's how to do that. Just click manage online business card. You'll be able to do this even if you have already activated it. It'll, it'll say something about here about uh, it's, uh, the online business card is active but you'll still have this gear wheel and these choices. So Manage Online Business Card will let you select what's displayed on it and change it. You'll click whatever item of information you want shown on the card, and I will restrict it to ones that I don't need to protect uh, from, the, from the public. Certainly you want to have the website name on it. When, when you start out with your online business card fresh, none of these are selected, so you'll select the ones you want. So to select one, website name, click this, and I have already created my website name of Tom's Tech Notes. So if you want to change this, just click it. Now you can edit it to change the name displayed. When you're done with a particular item, click Done. Likewise, this one is the description. And if it's already activated, you can edit it by clicking the, the name of the item. And again, you can edit it and click Done. Now once you've made some changes here, you want to remember them, so you need to click this bouncing ball. 
So if you log on and you edit your online business card, don't forget to click this bouncing ball because otherwise it won't be updated. So now I updated it. If I had made changes, I updated it. If, I, if you're finished editing, you can go ahead and close the window that's open now. If not, you can go back and continue editing, but we'll go ahead and close the window. If you want to activate the online business card, you just click this line here. Then instead of showing your website here, your first page, if you click would you like to activate and confirm it with a yes, then when you start the logon process in the future, you get this message that says online business card is visible and it shows you your online business card. Now if you're showing the online business card and you want to switch and show your website, you just take this line here, online business, business card is visible, you click the gear wheel, and you click publish website. Now when anyone accesses your website, they'll see the website and not your online business card. And now you can continue from here to edit your website by clicking edit up here, or even I believe down here. So let's just click it up here. Remember, only show on your online business card the, your personal information that you do want to make public. Backing up your website. One and one automatically backs up your website each time you publish it, as I just did when I demonstrated how to use the online business card. But if you're going to make a lot of changes to your website before publishing it, you want to save those changes in the middle of the set so that if you make a catastrophic error, you can restore your website to a point that had most of your changes in it. If you make a whole bunch of changes and then you make a major error and then you restore, you've got to redo all those changes. You don't want to do that in general. So here's how to save your backup. Click settings at the bottom of the control menu on the left and then you click backup site. Now it shows you the automatic backups these messages are automatic backups when, when you change the layout. This message is an automatic backup for when you published. Here's some of my uh, manual backups. Backup before other stuff and backup after video tutorials. That's after I made a, a set of changes. And, and this one, backup after all pages added. Those are manual backups. And the way you make a manual backup is you just type the name here and click save. It'll make a new backup. It'll time and date it. It'll be after this, of course, because this is the latest. And then later, if you make a catastrophic error while editing, pick the backup that has the changes that were OK, the latest one, and click Restore by that one. So if I started editing right now and I made a catastrophic error, like I made all the navigation bars go away, which I have been known to do, then all I'd have to do is open this backup site thing after clicking settings and then just click this guy here click restore and it would restore it to this point it's very similar to system restore for Windows it just restores your website nothing else I strongly urge you every time you make a number of changes and you're not ready to publish go ahead and create a manual backup then finish the rest of your changes then publish and like they say, publish early and publish often. Oh, I think that was voting in Chicago. But anyway, let's go back to editing the website. Close this window. Previews. As you design your website, you can click one of these icons right here to see how your website would appear on different kinds of devices. It it's defaults to the computer. This is how it would look on the computer. Not, not this control menu, but everything else. This is how it would look on an iPad tablet. Notice that the navigation menu shows on the computer, but for the iPad, it shows a symbol you click to show the navigation bar. Then you click on your website to make the navigation bar go away again. I have the menu option set a little bit differently here. When you set the navigation bar options, you have three different ways you can set them. You can set them for this, you can set them for that, and you can set them for your smartphone. And, and we'll see how to do that in a moment. Notice, though, that since I clicked this one and this appeared, I'm not in a true preview mode. So if you wanted to be in a true preview mode where you'd only see what you'd actually see on the device, 
you click this word preview right here. Then when you make things happen on whatever device you're looking at, you don't get any edit, edit screens appearing because you wouldn't see those on, if a viewer was looking at your uh, website on, on a uh, smartphone, for instance. You can get the full navigation menu by clicking this symbol. And then when you select a page, it'll go back shows that page, but it just shows the button for the uh, navigation. It shows you which page you're on, but it gives you the navigation button to show the navigation bar. If you click the preview here, not only can you select what it looks like on the computer, what it looks like on the iPad, and what it looks like on a smartphone, but you can actually look at all three of those at the same time. So this is very helpful when you're editing uh, your website to make sure it has a pleasing appearance on, on all three types of devices. So let's get off preview mode, back to the editor, and let's go back to computer display. The mode I have it in now, it shows the, uh, and we'll show you how to change these things. It, it always shows on the computer, it always shows the navigation sidebar. It always shows the selected page in bright white, and it shows the others in a dimmed color, dim white. If you hover over it, it brightens to show you which one it would open if you clicked it. That's the end of this video. If you liked this video, please click like and please subscribe to my channel. The channel has 250 computer help and hobby videos. This video is in series Easy Website Creation. The series shows you how to create your own inexpensive personal internet website like the one shown here. Videos in the series should be watched in order from the playlist. To open the playlist, pause the video, click the circled I in the video window, then click the playlist pop-up. To revisit the playlist later, create a shortcut while the playlist is open. That's the end of this video. If you liked it, please click like and click subscribe to subscribe to my channel. My channel has 250 computer help and hobby videos.